Well, I grew up as a military kid, so I have moved around a lot. I guess I just say I'm from Augusta, because <laughs> that's where I graduated high school from, but. That's, that's kind of where you grew up? Like yeah, your, your for the most childhood. part. Okay. Um, what was it like growing up in Augusta? That's so vague. <laughs> that's such a vague <laughs> question. It was okay. I, I think I just got used to a whole lot of people because we have the masters every year and it's just not something I really like. So I decided to come here uh, to West Georgia for college. And then I also decided this is not what I like. <laughs> so. Um, so, so you went to high school in Augusta as well? Yeah. What, what kind of kid were you in high school? Um, I was a little shit, <laughs> quite frankly. I didn't really have like one specific group that I fit into because um, I was a cheerleader. So I talked to a lot of cheerleaders, but I still felt like I didn't really fit in. I did graphic design and a whole lot of artsy stuff growing up. So I ended up taking that career path in high school. And I felt like I just also didn't fit in with people. I was just Alexis. <laughs> There's no other way to answer that. And so you mentioned you came to Carrollton for college. Mm -hmm. Are you still currently in college? I am. Um, I transferred to Augusta University, but I'm in the process of trying to go into the United States military. So <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, what made you interested in joining the military? Well, again, I'm a military kid. I saw what it did for my family. I'm just kind of put in a position right now where I'm not entirely sure where I, or like where I want to be. Um, I feel a little lost, but it's okay. That's part of life. It's normal. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. <laughs> so I felt like it was just a safe place to go to. Not really safe. I feel like that's a odd way to put it, but just knowing that it's a secure job mm -hmm. with plenty of benefits. So and that's yeah. entirely it. Like, <laughs> I wish there was some deeper answer to that question, but... Going back again about um, just high school a little bit, mm -hmm. you mentioned you were a cheerleader in high school. Mm -hmm. What was it? What was it like, sort of being a part of that crowd? I just felt like a lot of it was super, really superficial. I felt like I had to dumb myself down in order to be with people, and I tried so hard to fit in with the girls on the team, but no one really understood me, and I just didn't understand a lot of their humor, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to like diss cheerleaders because obviously I was one. I'm still hanging out with some that go to AU. Tell me about your main hobby that you've created your own Instagram account for. So I just started an Instagram account for my weightlifting. I started it because I was in a really bad relationship when I first got to school. And I was in the process of trying to get out of it. It was just really toxic, really. Uh, we brought out the worst in each other. And so when I finally broke that off, I had just gotten to a new school. I didn't really know people. I intentionally chose a school where I didn't know people. And my roommate really got me into weightlifting because I would just go to the gym with her because she was my best friend at the time. <laughs> and um, I just felt really empowered by it. And I started posting on Instagram and I realized like a year in, I was like, oh, I look nothing like I did a year ago. <laughs> and I'm not on anything. The only thing I take is creatine. So just to kind of know that, that I made that progress organically and by myself is really, really awesome. So tell me what got you into fitness? I had just gotten out of a really bad relationship and I felt like I needed something to release a lot of my emotions because I didn't really have friends to talk to just yet. It took me maybe six months to start making friends, or at least solid friends at school. So going to the gym and then finally starting to talk to people because people were coming up to me asking, hey, what's your split? I've seen you a lot. Like, what are you doing this weekend? Stuff like that. It just took me a while to, like, that's just how I made friends. Getting into weightlifting again, though, it was an emotional release. Uh, I used to really struggle with self-harm and uh, this was a substitute for that. It still kind of relapsed when I got out, of, like a few months after that relationship. Because I feel like after a certain point, you're just numb and you're going through your cycles every day. I just wanted to feel something. And uh, after my first relapse, I told myself this wasn't okay. Um, I was talking to somebody at that point and he left because he got the ick, I guess, is the best way to put it. I don't know. Um, it's hard to be with someone when you see that kind of stuff. So we ended up going our separate ways and I just was in the gym all the time. I was partying all the time. And I felt like I kind of got that, it was, partying was almost like a reward because I went to the gym. So, which I don't recommend. Alcohol is not a substitute. <laughs> Have you found that taking care of your body 
has positively affected your mind and your mood as well? Yes. So what people fail to understand is that mentally you're going to feel like shit um, when you start lifting because that's when you start really sitting with yourself. Um, the beginning is always the hardest because you're really looking in the mirror. You're like, am I making progress? Am I making progress? Am I making progress yet? And for me, sometimes I still struggle to see progress in myself until somebody has to point it out and be like, you look nothing like you did a year and a half, two years ago. You have to really positively affirm yourself and your relationship with food specifically um, in order to continue making progress. And I feel like if I didn't have that, or if I wasn't the one who was positively affirming myself, I would still be stuck in these cycles of self-harm. Like it's kind of fucked up, but like self-abuse almost. It's important to talk about though, because people just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Mending your relationship with food, especially after having a really strained relationship with food where growing up you think that you only need a certain amount of calories just so you can stay skinny, but staying skinny isn't really healthy. Being healthy is pretty. And people desire people who take care of themselves. <laughs> And it took me a very long time to learn that. It took me until I got to college and started doing this. And then I started eating almost 3,000 calories a day. <laughs> but I got the muscles now, so. Uh, it sounds like you have a lot of experience and sort of wisdom now about, you know, going through those periods of self-harm. Yeah. What advice do you have to someone who's maybe still in the depths struggling with that at the moment? It does get better. Um, there's a certain point, though, that you have to accept that even if it doesn't, you're still stuck here. I ran to God and um, Christianity specifically because that's where I grew up. I really struggled because I was in a relationship with somebody who didn't lead me in the way that I was supposed to be led. He enabled a lot of my issues um, and kind of worsened them. And then it took me a while to realize that environment is key and you are the product of your environment entirely. And this is a lot. <laughs> you are the product of, of your environment, how you take care of yourself, how you think about yourself. It took me a very long time to at least be comfortable in my body. And honestly, I'm still not. That part doesn't ever get better, really. I don't think anybody's super, super comfortable, um, especially when they do stuff like I do. Um, but I think I watched the interview with Sebum and even he, a five-time Mr. Olympia champion, um, back to back, still struggles with consistency and having a positive mindset. I think my advice would be to just consider who you want to be and just start being that person. There's no, there's no start date, there's no end date. Just start taking care of yourself the way that somebody else would take care of you. Yeah. It's like what, I think I've heard David Goggins say that before, talking about there's no finish line. There's no finish line, really, because yeah. I feel like, I feel like after your first serious relationship and just kind of being a young adult, you kind of have to go through a period of being a shitty person. And you have to hit your low before you can start really improving and being a good person. And I feel like I really hit that low my freshman year of college, right after I got out of my bad relationship, right before I started healing and... Um, I was surrounding myself with the wrong people. I was surrounding myself with the wrong people. And to this day, like, I know that my actions are still my own. I'm not gonna sit here and blame other people. I think I was just influenced heavily. Um, and that's something it took a while for me to learn is that I am heavily influenced by the people I surround myself with. And most people are, I think they just fail to recognize it. <laughs> Have you found that since you started going to the gym, working out more that you surrounded yourself with more positive people? Oh, for sure. There was a period where I realized that I was surrounding myself with the wrong people. Something happened that I just don't want to talk about on camera right now, but just something happened and then I realized these people were never my friends anyway. So there's a period of necessary isolation between this friend group, this event, and then becoming who I am now. And I'm still not perfect. I'm nowhere near that. And I know that. Um, but this self-recognition um, to realize that you would rather be alone for a while than surround yourself with shitty people. I think now, because honestly, my friend group is still super small. It's like three people. <laughs> I talk to three people daily. Honestly, I prefer that because it's quality over quantity.
Right. Yeah. That's, um, a, that's interesting because I think for a lot of college people, especially when they first get in there, they want to try to make as many friends as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was something that I really struggled with because my thing is I found myself gravitating towards Greek life because my first roommate, she surrounded herself with some very uh, interesting people. <laughs> And she went to high school with some very interesting people. And I just don't think that she ever left that mindset. Um, and they never left that mindset. And I surrounded myself with that. And I just realized that after a while of partying and hanging out with people that I should not have been hanging out with in hindsight, um, it really helped hit my rock bottom once I started drinking almost every weekend. And I was abusing weed all the time. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I feel like for me, I hit a period where I realized I just didn't want to do that anymore because I was tired of being that person. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, What advice would you have to someone who's wanting to start their fitness journey, maybe weightlifting, um, but they don't know where to start? They almost, because there can be a problem these days with the internet, especially of like too much information. Oh, yeah. That you have no idea where to start. Especially since a lot of it's wrong. And the wrong things keep getting spread. And that pisses me. There are like few things that upset me, but misinformation is something that upsets me. One piece of advice that I would give to somebody who's starting their fitness journey is to really just find, try a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't have to be lifting. It could be going outside and just going on a walk. Um, It could be yoga. It could be swimming. Just find something that you think is exciting and something you look forward to every day. To me, lifting is like a reward at the end of the day. Or it can be a start to my day. I really don't like cardio. I need to start doing it more. But like, <laughs> I think it's really important to find something that you like. I actually was just talking to um, my cousin about this because uh, my uncle, he was, a, he just passed. He was a big boy. Uh, I'm talking 5'9", almost 480 pounds. He's, yeah. I think it just kind of scared everyone because he passed away either from like a stroke or a heart attack, something like that. My cousin Logan reached out to me and he was like, after just, but just seeing, uh, what happened to my uncle, um, I don't want to leave Rylan behind. And so he wants to lift just two days a week and that's enough. That and then just go outside and walk around and just be human. <laughs> it took me a while when um, I got back because I was really depressed. You know, I left a lot of my friends here um, and I hadn't really entered that period of isolation yet to realize that like just going outside and like touching some fucking grass <laughs> really makes a difference. Um, it doesn't have to be anything intense. And someone who I really wanted to look like right at the beginning of my fitness journey was Chrissy Sila. And she has been training for years. It is something that you also have to um, remember is that like your favorite Instagram or your favorite YouTube personality, that fitness personality is probably on something or has been t- over five to six years working towards their goals. Progress isn't linear and it's important to understand that they're not instant or results aren't instant either. What's your workout routine like? Oh my goodness. So I was on an Arnold split for the first 16 weeks of me working out. First off, okay, this is a journey. I'm gonna just go ahead and walk you through it. When I first started lifting, I had no idea what I was doing. I was showing up with my roommate who also has no idea what she was doing. I just kind of was showing up and picking up heavy circles, <laughs> um, picking, oh, picking up the weight and not really paying attention to form. And then once I realized that nutrition is important, um, I started trying to eat right. And that's when my relationship with food kind of got unhealthy again. But in turn, it got better because I was still able to pick up the weight and then I started paying attention to form. So once I finally got form down, I switched to an Arnold split for the first 16 weeks. But right now I'm a put th- six days a week push pull leg split with um, 45 minutes of running at the end of it. And did you, when you started out, were you doing six days a week or do you work up to that? I think I dove head first because I was just in a really bad mental state. I really don't recommend it. <laughs> I really don't don't do what I did because um, I felt like the gym was my only happy place. So uh, I realized that this is before I started partying because I didn't party right away uh, like most people do like most freshman girls do when they come to a party school I try I tried to stick it out because when I got here I really felt lost and I felt like it wasn't healthy and um, I ended up just going to the gym every morning before class every night after class 
went back to my dorm because my first semester I didn't work. So that's all I was able to do. <laughs> I tried going to on-campus events and I felt like it's just really weird trying to make friends at those, just the way they're set up. But um, now I've just found a way to healthily put it into my work schedule and it's great. In your Instagram bio, it reads, I'm literally just a girl. <laughs> can you talk a little about what, can you talk about what you mean by that? So <laughs> there's a TikTok and the sound used is, I'm just a girl. And I felt, I just personally identified with that so hard. I identify with that so hard because anytime I like mildly mess up, or like my mom will be irritated with me or something, something's just not done in the house. I'll look at her and I'll go, I'm literally just a girl. <laughs> or like people, this, I had a deeper conversation with one of my friends about this because it got to the point where like people started coming up to me in my hometown and being like, hey, and like strangers to me. Like I've seen your Instagram, I've been following you for a while. I just wanna say thank you. Like you've really pushed me uh, to start my fitness journey. And I'm just a girl. In your defense, honor. <laughs> I'm just a girl. Because um, that's just how it feels. I, I'm just another person. And I constantly hear that I'm the reason people started going to the gym. Or I'm the reason someone's consistent with, with the gym. And it's just odd. I don't know how to respond. I'm like, cool. I'm glad that you look at me that way. Uh, Lean Beef Patty, who is one of my favorite uh, lifters, she made a TikTok a while ago that's like um, posting content online and then being perceived. <laughs> Actually being perceived by people this is so odd. And I just, that's how I feel. Does it, does it feel odd to sort of become like sort of a tiny bit of like an internet celebrity almost like among your hometown? It's not just a hometown too either. Cause like I've gone places and people have recognized me from TikTok and shit too. It's odd. I really struggle with it. I was actually talking about that in therapy. I really struggle with all of that. I just have an issue where I think that these things shouldn't happen to me, but there's also no reason that they shouldn't happen. I'm just sharing something that I really enjoy and having people actually watch that and care about it is just new to me. So maybe eventually I'll get comfortable with it. It's just odd. <laughs> in the best way. I'm very thankful. I'm very blessed for it. What's, what was your experience like coming to college for the very first time and sort of trying to find your place, especially because you mentioned you came here not knowing anybody? Yeah. Being your person, like your own person, is very hard. Becoming an independent adult, because that's legally what we are. We should not be qualified to do so. <laughs> uh, is really, really weird. It's hard because you feel lost. Nothing feels right. You keep fucking up. It's normal. And that's what took me a while to, uh, to realize is that all of it's normal. If you think that you have your shit going on, you're humbled the next day. The next day, it is so funny because um, Matt, when you actually reached out to me, I, uh, I got a phone call. I, I was just talking to my coworkers about it. Right after I got a phone call saying that my uncle had passed and I was like, oh, <laughs> well, God works in mysterious ways. We'll go with it. And then uh, I left work and went home. <laughs> And so I thought I was on top of it for a minute and then was immediately knocked back down. <laughs> um, there are a few times in college where that happened. I thought I really had my shit going on my first semester when I was doing all this partying. I made all these friends and then realized, like just woke up and realized one day that those aren't, they aren't like reliable friends. They, they aren't people that you want to surround yourself with regularly. Have you ever been in love? Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> do you still believe in love? I do. I currently have a boyfriend and I, I do love him. I, I kind of don't like it sometimes because it's like, man, you're really cool, but sometimes I'm so tired of your shit. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> but I will continue to wake up and choose to love him every day. I think the concept of love is really weird because the cynical part of me, while I do believe in, I, like, this young, Part of me really, really wants to believe that like, and it like this romantic idea of waking up every day, pretending that everything, every day is gonna be perfect when realistically it's not. And it's just nice to have someone to hold on to during all of these, all of the hard days, especially where like, you're still struggling, they're still struggling. I wake up 
and I'm still depressed, but I'm still working through it. I'm still recovering from the effects of uh, partying and just realize that not even, it's, I want to make it clear. I don't have like a substance abuse issue, but um, you kind of get fixated on a certain lifestyle and you think that the people you surrounded yourself with at the time were the people that you were going to be friends with forever. And you realize that wasn't healthy. <laughs> I believe love is waking up and choosing to love the other person every day, picking the other person and just knowing that through those days, at the end of the day, you have someone to lean on and somebody who you still admire. I think that you should actively be working to better yourself for each other, for each other and for yourselves. Do you think that <laughs> our generation, the younger generation specifically is having a harder time sort of like finding long-term love oh my gosh yes oh my goodness yes um why do you think that is okay so i'll start with gen z <laughs> i'll start with gen z i think that growing up we had really unrealistic expectations i feel like everybody had really unre unrealistic expectations i feel like that's not exclusive to gen z in itself but i think our issues were that we grew up consuming absurd amounts of it though. The difference between us and like generations before us is that they had like movies, like just movies though, and they had moderate social media consumption. I feel like when you digest so much social media in a day and so much information, it's really easy to get lost in it. It's really easy to get lost in parts of things. Cause you have to remember that love, like that love that you see growing up that's outside of your parents or your friends' parents or your grandparents or like is just the social media uh, or like the YouTube parents or the YouTube couple. And you're only seeing a fraction of their life. It's all staged too, or at least a lot of it. I'm not gonna say all of it, but a fair bit of it is staged. And I feel like it's very hard for people to accept that still. I think Gen Alpha has their own set of issues because a lot of them are iPad kids. <laughs> I'm gonna just put it at that. Um, I feel like people don't know how to interact with one another. I feel like their parents, just speaking from experience, like I don't think a lot of parents um, are teaching proper social interaction. People aren't going outside. People aren't experiencing real world, real world things. I think it's, it just comes down to people aren't talking to each other. And so you don't know how to interact with one another. Do you think there are any practical solutions that people can adopt to maybe get back out there? I had to start putting down my phone and walking away <laughs> because I started to have really unrealistic expectations now. I know that my version of love, what my expectations are in a relationship are defined by the Bible, but I know that's not how everyone run, runs their life. To me, and you don't have to believe this, um, you don't have to carry this into your own personal lives, but people should love one another as if the world is going to end tomorrow. And I'm not saying that like in a super like dramatic way. That sounds so dramatic and convoluted <laughs> or just maybe pretentious. There is going to be a time though in which you're going to hug your last hug with someone. You're going to have your last kiss with someone. You're gonna have your last goodbye with someone. I try, now I wasn't always this way. Um, I try my best though to make sure that each and every single person that I come across maybe at least has a little bit of a better day. <laughs> I expect at the end of the day though, um, to be able to have a conversation with them, to be able to talk about not just surface level things. Um, I feel like my issue with a lot of people is that we're all superficial because we're afraid of offending one another. Um, while that might be true, I've just stopped caring. <laughs> I'm gonna live my life and it's okay. That's where we agree to disagree. What do you think about uh, the rise of dating apps versus meeting in person? Oh my goodness. So I can't really say a whole lot because my boyfriend I met on Tinder, <laughs> um, but it was completely unintentional. So he's not on social media, so I'm gonna respect his privacy. But I say that as we, I just talked about how we met on Tinder. <laughs> I was on it for shiggles. That's how I'm gonna put it. Um, when I first started going on dating apps, I wasn't looking for anything serious. I also wasn't looking for anything like casual sex. I feel like casual sex has kind of ruined um, a lot of 
people's understanding of love and what it's like to love one another because you get your, your dopamine rush and then you're on your way. Um, and then I feel like you fall victim to these like situationships and I've fallen victim to situationships too. So I feel like you kind of lose yourself in the process though because things like Tinder, things like Bumble, um, things like Hinge are so superficial because you're just looking at people and deciding whether or not you want to get to know someone based on how they look. I was really originally on Tinder when I got home because my girlfriends and I will do this thing where we drink a few glasses of wine and then we'll see who we can find from high school. I don't know if y'all do that, but uh, that's what we decided to do. I randomly stumbled across this man and we were all swiping. And then I stopped for a second and I asked my friend and I was like, hey, like, I know we're on here for shiggles, but like, should I swipe right? And she was like, I swear to God, Alexis, like if you pass on this one, I'm going to be so upset with you. And uh, four months later, <laughs> now we're here and we're doing a long distance while he's stationed in Japan, but. Congratulations. Thank you. It's just a lot. I'm super excited. I'm going to go see him in April. I still, <laughs> I think that dating apps have totally ruined our concept of relationships, but um, I feel like my boyfriend and I were a different case purely because we had no intentions of like actually dating um, or any kind of hookup or anything like that. We, I think he said that he wanted to just get off base for a while because he's tired of seeing other Marines. <laughs> and I just wanted to get out of my house, so. <laughs> what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Oh my goodness, there's so many. Um, I think the most important lesson that I've ever learned is to love yourself like you would your best friend or, and hear me out, because there's so many, treat other people how you want to be treated. And it's in a way that like, I feel like everybody says that, but I feel like not enough people really understand the gravity of it. I know that I, when I first got here, I would mostly be nice, but there are some days where like, I would be in like a bad mood and then I ended up taking it on like a complete stranger, <laughs> which is totally inappropriate. <laughs> and um, after like the second time of me doing that, I, look, I like reflected and I was like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> this is like a complete stranger and you were just an absolute asshole. <laughs> I just, I think it's important to self-reflect and just be thankful and grow from things. All right, Alexis, thank you for sharing your thoughts and your story with us. No problem.